What's happening guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to a brand new episode of Caffeinate today for June the 28th of 2019. Of course, if you are brand new to the show, welcome on in and this is a live daily gaming news podcast hosted five days a week, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern time if you did want to catch up on the hottest gaming news of the day. Of course, then the show is taken down from twitch.tv slash Samuel Adams and put back up on youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media as well as podcast services around the world, thanks to Anchor.fm. But today we are talking about the Steam Summer Sale. Of course, it is one of the best ways to get some pretty good deals on a lot of PC games, but it does seem that the yearly minigame is confusing some people and hurting some developers. We will talk more about how that is happening and what can be done. Then, a big update is coming to Apex Legends for Season 2, and two new trailers show off what exactly you can experience in Respawn's new update to the free-to-play Big BR. Yakuza 6 actor suspended by agency over alleged link to organized crime. The plot thickens, and it seems like Yakuza may be more real to life than you could have ever imagined. Niantic is throwing a Harry Potter Wizards Unite fan festival this summer, just in case you wanted to hang out with the cream of the crop when it comes to people. Uh, European charts are in and Crash Team Racing takes pole position. I like the pun, it's very nice. Then Halle Berry is joining Keanu Reeves in Fortnite, and finally I've got a new battle royale for you, and it could entail some flappy bird tie-ins. Let's talk more about that to round out the show. Uh, but without further ado, again, if you are brand new, I do hope you enjoy today's program, but let's go ahead and dive into today's top stories. Flappy Royale is something we'll talk about later, but Steam Summer Sale game is confusing and Valve is trying to fix it. Busted mechanics hurt players. Poorly written rules may have harmed some developers. Along with this year's Steam Summer Sale came the Steam Grand Prix. It's a racing-themed metagame that rewards customers for buying and playing games through Valve's online marketplace. The trouble is that for the first two days, it didn't work correctly. Making matters worse, confusing rules appear to have hurt some developers. In a blog post today, Valve said it will make changes to the code to make the game work right. More importantly for developers, it clarified what participants need to do in order to win free games. Here is how it's supposed to work. Upon logging into Steam, you are invited to join in the Steam Grand Prix. It is free. Step one, choose a team, all of which are themed after cuddly animals. Then you win points that you can spend on your team by buying Steam games and playing games you already own through that service. Players choose how to spend these points in the Grand Prix. They can speed the little driver on down the track or choose to hinder opposing teams. Unfortunately, the system that underpins the race itself was busted at launch. We want to apologize, Valve wrote on its blog, for the broken mechanics that have led to an unbalanced event. Based on your feedback, we have made some updates to the game. In short, those updates have been to better balance the teams. Just about everyone hopped on Team Corgi on day one, allowing that team to get way out in front. Now Valve has done something to help make things more competitive. We have made some back-end changes to help mitigate some of the snowball effects we have seen that have led to Team Corgi running away with the first two days of the races despite their tiny legs, Valve said. We changed some code to help deal with the imbalanced team sizes across the board. I captured an image, the author says, of the leaderboards both before and after the blog post, and things appear to have narrowed a touch. I imagine things will change even further over the next few days. This is important information for Grand Prix participants because members of the winning team each day will be selected at random to receive games from the top of their Steam wish list. But therein lies the game's other problem. People very rarely look at their Steam wish list, and prompting them to revise it to actually put a little time into ranking games on their list has apparently led users to delete games games from their wish list entirely. The Steam wish list is one way for customers to consult and sort through thousands of games going up on the platform every year. But it is also a way for indie developers to get Valve's attention. If a game shows up on more wish lists, it has a better chance of being featured on the Steam marketplace, hence why so many developers in the community tend to ask for people to wish list their games. So, when people delete games from their wish list, it's a big deal, especially for indies. Many are reporting that the current Steam sale has led to massive spikes in wish list deletions. And of course, you can see many people sharing this instance on Twitter. Right now, on Twitter especially, there is quite a bit of hand wringing going on. Developers are trading disturbing graphs showing their games being deleted from wish list in mass. The spike in the graph always coincides with the start of the current Steam sale. That's leading some to blame Steam outright for damaging their tenuous 
tenuous relationship with potential customers and ultimately costing them money. Polygon reached out to several indie developers involved in the conversation on social media. Responses varied. Some aren't seeing spikes at all, while others are clearly suffering. Valve has heard the message and issued a second apology alongside the first. We designed something pretty complicated with a whole bunch of numbers and rules and recognize we should have been more clear, Valve wrote on that same blog. We want to apologize for the confusion that this has caused. That apology has come with a handy GIF showing Steam users what they need to do to spruce up their wish list should they be lucky enough to be randomly selected to win something, and the animation nothing gets deleted. And so, of course, unfortunately for some developers, the damage has been done. If you are a dev selling your game on Steam, Polygon wants to hear from you. Uh, but it does seem like this year's Steam Summer Sale mini game has definitely hurt some developers and confused many people that are just simply trying to find some pretty good deals on their games. Uh, but I will say the general confusion for consumers is that you are going to receive the game that is highest on your wish list. And so, generally, people would literally delete every other game from their wish list except for the one that they wanted just to be sure that they actually got what they wanted so for instance if you wanted my friend Pedro uh, then you would just leave that game on your list delete everything else and then after the Steam summer sale is over you can go back and pretty much just restart your wish list because nobody genuinely uh, uses them to keep track of things they want it's just generally hey I'm marginally interested in this game I cleaned out my wish list I had tons of bloated stuff that I just didn't want anymore uh, logging up my wish list and so that's pretty much what we see here uh, whenever you direct somebody's attention to something that has not had attention in a while it tends to be fixed up a bit it's kind of like when you walk in and say oh my god this bathroom is disgusting I should probably clean this that's pretty much what a steam wish list tends to be at least in my book so again, hopefully this will all fix the issue with the Steam Summer Sale game. Of course, uh, it's a yearly tradition to have a mini game for the Steam Summer Sale. A lot of people really get into it. Uh, and this year's just seems to be a bit confusing for developers and for consumers and it's not very good whenever it comes to a sale. Uh, but of course, if you do want to check out the sale and play the mini game, it's running all the way until July the 9th, so you've got plenty of time to get in on the action and join a competing team against Team Corgi and come out on top, even with all of those tiny legs moving very quickly. But if you don't like Steam, you might like Apex Legends on Origin, and a Leviathan might just crush you the next time you jump into the game. Apex Legends developer Respawn released a Season 2 trailer yesterday in which we get to see the upcoming new character Watson and an EMP exploding in King's Canyon. Leaked trailers on Reddit, one of which has now been officially released by Respawn, reveals even more changes coming to the game when Season 2 launches on July the 2nd. Over the last month, Respawn and publisher EA have shared pieces of the information that appeared in the now official and the leaked trailer. Flyers, a Season 2 dragon-like beast, were hinted at during E3's EA Play and appeared in the game about one one week later. Since then, Respawn has shared some of the other Season 2 additions like a new weapon, new hop-ups, and changes to airdrops. The officially released trailer is animated and narrative focused, showing familiar faces like Mirage, Bangalore, and Octane fighting it out. Midway through the trailer, an EMP goes off and we see an upcoming character, Watson, react to it. The EMP topples a large tower and we see Watson shock a downed Octane to revive him. A horde of flyers appears and we then see a Leviathan, which usually stands in the water of the game's island, stomping across the map. The leak on Reddit contains this trailer as well as another one. The second trailer, which Respawn has not released, but which a producer at Respawn acknowledged on Twitter, it's now been released by the way, appears to have been filmed in-game and shows the effects of the EMP explosion, with some areas of King's Canyon destroyed while others have gotten new structures or sprouted some greenery. The leaked trailer also shows a closer look at Watson's powers. Watson and her abilities were revealed at EA Play. She can place an electronic fence that damages enemies, and her ultimate is a defensive pylon that recharges her and her team's shields and blocks grenades. In the leaked trailer, we see her powers in action. We get to see how her electric fence damages an enemy who slides through it, and then she can place fences of different sizes. What appears to be a finishing move shows an electrified Gibraltar exploding when Watson touches him. We also see a few Battle Pass weapons and character skins, and emo players can perform all skydiving and the badges for the upcoming ranked mode, along with their tier names, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and Apex Predator, if you did want to get in on some of the ranked action. 
Apex Legends Season 1 Battle Pass felt a little underwhelming, they say at Kotaku, and while it's unclear if the new rewards in Season 2 will be more exciting, skydiving emotes sound pretty fun to me. I am ready for some map changes, and of course, especially after being spoiled by the frequent Overwatch changes. I said Overwatch, I meant Fortnite. I mean, they're easy to confuse. They're so similar. Uh, in the leaked trailer, we see a flyer in a cage, and I'm excited to find out if I can unleash it to fight by my side or just forget it's there and get the crap scared out of me. We will find out when Season 2 launches next week. And so if you do want to check out what's happening in Apex Legends Season 2, again, a lot of updates coming to the game, and that's something that I think the game needs very, very much we got to have some new content. Of course, Apex Legends took off a couple of months back, uh, and it really was deemed the Fortnite killer for a hot minute. It was a game that was getting a lot of traction very, very quickly, and I think that maybe Respawn wasn't prepared for that, and of course, they have made public statements about the fact that they want to ensure the work-life balance of their team is ensured during the development of the game, and that's something that is a noble cause, and it's something that we should respect, because again, we see so many reports, just like we saw yesterday, about crunch in the game industry about people being overworked uh, underpaid in some cases etc etc and so to balance a work life with the actual life of the developers is something that is a necessity and so hey it's a good thing to see some updates coming even with the delayed time frame because of respecting developers uh, so if you do want to dive in and check out the update to apex legends again season two dropping on july the second and it should be a pretty good time and again we have two brand new trailers up right now on youtube if you did want to give them a gander and see what it could entail then we have yakuza 6 actors suspended by an agency over alleged link to organized crime hiroyiku miyasaku let's try that again hiroyoki Miyasaku, maybe, sure, why not? The actor who plays, oh god, Soyoshi Nagumo in Yakuza 6, the song of life, is involved in a scandal. Nailed it. Miyasako is 49 years old, Japanese comedian who is among 11 actors dropped by a talent agency, Yoshimoto Kogyoko, after recently discovering they attended a party hosted by someone linked to organized crime. Japan Times reports that the party was held five years ago by a group involved in money transfer fraud. Miyasako and other comedians provide provided entertainment for the attendees and were paid for their efforts. Despite the actors not being aware of this apparent connection, the agency is nonetheless no longer interested in representing them. Although the comedians were not aware it was a gathering hosted by the antisocial group, we still consider it a very serious matter that they accepted money from such a group, Yoshimoto Kogyo said in a statement. And so, as you might expect, broadcasters in Japan have already begun taking episodes where comedians are featured off air or cut out their scenes entirely. This is typical for Japanese media, as recently seen with Judgment's actor Pierre Taki, who was replaced after the game's release with a different actor. Sega had to call back copies on sale and reissue a patched version from which Taki was completely scrubbed. The game and same could happen with Yakuza 6, although it is unlikely given the game's age. We will not know for sure until Sega decides whether the matter is grave enough to warrant taking action, and Yakuza 6 is likely going to end up on PC at some point, which could be a reason enough to make the change. And so we have yet another member of the Yakuza family, no pun intended, no joke intended, actually being tied to organized crime. Of course, we had Taki, who was uh, essentially accused of a few things, found to be guilty of a few things, maybe a little bit of nose candy here and there. But hey, uh, what is a bit of nose candy during the day? Just kidding. Kids, don't do cocaine. Please, sincerely. Uh, but when it comes to Yakuza 6, I think that maybe changes should be made. If you made them to Judgment, you might as well make them to 6, especially if there's a PC version of the game coming down the pipe. But again, if you are a fan of Hiroyuki Miyasaku, then I apologize, but it does seem that he may be tied to organized crime. Just kidding, we see this kind of instance all the time where there are people with a big wallet, with, with deep pockets, that offer comedians, that offer entertainers, that offer celebrities money to come and pad their events. I mean, we see George Clooney, if I remember correctly, don't quote me on that, but I think I remember correctly, going and hanging out with a Putin slash Russian hosted event, uh, which again, not exactly the same thing, but hey, it's a similar kind of situation. Whenever money is on the table, people tend to take it. If if it is not something that is completely and totally grave, which it doesn't sound like this is something that is completely and totally grave. So should the Yakuza changes be made in six? We'll have to see what happens. But in my opinion, looks like it could be coming down the pipe.
However, let's talk about Harry Potter Wizards Unite, the, of course, brand new game from Niantic that came out just a couple of days ago. It is already getting a fan fest this summer. Niantic has already been hinting at plans to throw a big festival for Harry Potter Wizards Unite players, something in the same vein as its Pokemon Go Fest events, but with less Pokemon and more virtual witchcraft and wizardry. Mentioned back when the game first got its launch date, it is now going to be a reality. Niantic says it will be throwing a two-day Wizards Unite festival in Indianapolis, Indiana later this summer. The details as they stand now are a bit light, but here is what we know. It will happen on Labor Day weekend, August 31st through September the 1st. Whereas the U.S. version of Niantic's Pokemon Go Fest series takes place in Chicago, Illinois, the Wizards Unite festival will take place one state over in Indianapolis, Indiana. Like Go Fest, you will need a ticket to participate, though no word yet on how much tickets will cost. The current plan is to open up ticket sales via a lottery. At this point, it would have been a bit surprising if Niantic didn't do a real-world gathering for Wizards Unite. They've been doing in-person anomaly events around the world for their first title, Ingress, for years and have held dozens of real-world events for Pokemon Go. Niantic uses these events as an opportunity to bring the most hardcore fans together with tens of thousands of players taking over these parks for days. Attendees are sometimes rewarded with early access to something new. At GoFest 2018, for example, players were given the opportunity to catch a new extra-rare Pokemon, Celebi, for near nearly a month before anyone else. And so if you did want to uh, check out Harry Potter Wizards Unite, again, free game uh, out now on, I believe, both iOS and Android, but it's essentially Harry Potter Go. It's the exact same thing as Pokemon Go, but in the world of Harry Potter, from what I understand, I've been talking to a guy at work who's been very much so into it, and it seems like he is enjoying it enough to keep playing it, so hey, you might as well. Uh, but again, to see these fan fest is not something that is shocking, because hey, that's a great way to bring your community together in a way that not too many other events really can. Uh, being able to meet up in person, especially uh, in a game that is so centered around being in the real world, to be able to have a real world event just simply makes sense. And to be able to give hardcore fans, I mean, there are people that are going to be flying out to this thing. A couple of extra bells and whistles in game sounds like a pretty good decision to me. So again, if you did want to check out Niantic's game out now, and then if you did want to go to the Fan Fest being held this coming Labor Day weekend in Indianapolis, Indiana. But you could be too busy playing Crash Team Racing because it looks like it's going pretty well. You could even have bought it and you could be one of these statistics. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled was the best-selling game across Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Australia, both as a download and a physical release. In the latest data from European chart supplier GSD, and including the games sold for the week ending in June 23rd, it is the best seller. Unsurprisingly, the PS4 version of Crash Team Racing was the best seller, followed by the Xbox One edition and then the Nintendo Switch. However, the result is skewed slightly because Nintendo still does not share download data. In fact, if you look at the physical-only chart, although PS4 still comes out on top, Nintendo Switch arrives ahead of the Xbox One. Regardless, it is a very strong start for Activision's Kart Racer, which also enjoyed a dominant performance in the UK charts, which came out earlier in the week. It's not the only Kart Racer to perform well this week. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe races from number 6 to number 21. Excuse me to number 6 from 21. Nintendo's game has been a popular bundle item with the Switch console, and sales often spike if there is a promotional activity around the hardware, which there has been. Again, the digital sales of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe are not counted, so again, that could be skewed just a bit. Last week's number one, Borderlands the pre-sequel, disappears from the chart entirely following an end to the game's sale. It's a quiet week for new releases aside from this, so there are a few familiar faces in the top ten which do include, again at number one, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, Grand Theft Auto V, FIFA 19 coming in at number three, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege at four, followed by Red Dead Redemption 2, then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe coming in at number six, Day is Gone at seven, hanging into the top ten, very impressive, The Division 2 at eight, The Sims 4 at nine, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey down there at number ten. So participating companies in the GSD charts, run by B2Boost on behalf of the ISFE, are Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, Capcom, Codemasters, EA, Focus Home, and more. And of course, they break down more about the schematics of how these numbers come to be. But it does seem like CTR Nitro Fueled is doing very well in Europe, and that is to no surprise, because again, as I said a couple of days back, uh, we are in the thick of summer. Uh, there are still games rolling out, there are more games coming out than ever before, and good games at that. But still, it is a bit slow as compared to your October into November and your February into March. And so, whenever you have these bit of a bit of a lull period, so to speak, you get 
bigger sales of smaller games. And of course, CTR is still a big game in and of itself, a very nostalgic fueled release. So it makes sense that it's doing pretty well. I'm excited to see what the numbers are for the United States as well as around the world. But you might just want to stick to playing Fortnite and congratulations, you can now play as Halle Berry. You can get the Sophia outfit in the shop if you did want to have a matching pair with John Wick. It must be a bit lonely for John Wick in Fortnite. He's a gloomy man trapped in a relentlessly colorful, cheery world. Cheer up, John. Now you've got a friend in the form of fellow assassin and pal Sophia, played by Halle Berry in the movie. Her outfit has appeared in the shop alongside her brooding buddy. Leaks back in May suggested Sophia would be coming to Fortnite, though it looks like the skin has been tweaked since it was initially discovered by data miners. It's all a surprise to me, the author says, as I didn't even realize Halle Berry was in John Wick 3. I thought it was Keanu and loads of people he gets to kill. You can purchase Sophia from the shop if you did want to pick up the John Wick skin as well, and she's part of the John Wick set, getting her own backpack and cost 1500 V bucks. If you did want the chunk even more money at Epic, just throw it into the furnace that's buying exclusives like The Division 2 and other games. Uh, but I digress, if you actually did want to dive in, very cool looking skin. Overall, glad to see Halle Berry in Fortnite. Because we live in 2019 where that's something we get excited about. But again, John Wick skins are pretty cool. Of course, very trendy in Fortnite. If you have the OG skin, that shows that you're kind of the OG of a Fortnite veteran, if you will. And then the new one with a better character model and in general just a better appearance. Uh, that one is also available if you did want that. But maybe you don't want to play any of these games. Flappy Royale. Let's talk about that. A brand new BR coming down the pipe. Flappy Bird is back and it turns it into Fortnite. Flappy Bird is a gaming legend and one of the most explosively popular mobile games ever made, but what if it were more like Fortnite? That's the idea behind Flappy Royale, a new game from the developers Orta, Therox, and M. Laser Walker, with contributions from Zag Gage. It mashes together the endless flapping gameplay of Flappy Bird with the latest bird standing style of the BR genre that's all the rage these days. Gameplay is simple, just like it was in the original game, tap on your bird to flap and dodge your way through some spaciously Mario-esque pipes. Excuse me, suspiciously isn't too much space, except the goal isn't to survive as long as you can. It's to survive longer than the other 99 players, all of whom you can see flapping alongside you in real time. And because it is a battle royale game, everyone starts out together on a bus as you would expect. It's a similar game to the recently released and even more recently DCMA'd by Nintendo Mario Royale, which offered similar how long can you survive gameplay, albeit with classic Mario stages instead of random Flappy Bird pipes. In a twist from the regular Flappy formula, there are customization options for making your bird stand out from the flock, another thing that is barred from Fortnite, along with a daily trial mode that offers a preset course that players can try up to 10 times for a spot on the worldwide leaderboard. Right now, Flappy Royale is available on iOS and Android and open beta with a full launch planned for July 2019 if you did want to check out the Flappy Bird game. Of course, a very interesting game nonetheless, an interesting concept, but will it actually rise to the top? Could this be the Apex Legends killer and the Fortnite killer that we have been looking forward to? Absolutely not. Flappy Bird will never be uh, the, the Battle Royale game of the century, but again, it's a cool little idea, a good way to practice your development skills, I would say, uh, but I will say, the Battle Royale genre has pushed games to new limits. As we see in the chat with OKS Healer pointing out Tetris 99, uh, the Battle Royale trend is pushing developers to create something new, even if it is just for fun and just to push their skills and push the ideas that they've already laid down on the table. Tetris 99, fantastic idea, love the game, uh, it's a very cool concept and it's something that's fun to watch as well, which is a big element of Battle Royale games. They have to be fun to watch because of the society that we live in and the status of the gaming and entertainment industry that we have today. Flappy Royale takes that same kind of concept where you have a basic foundational idea and you add Battle Royale to it, making a completely new experience. It's something that's cool. Will it be for everyone? Absolutely not and that's perfectly fine. Not everybody has to like everything. But if you do want to check it out again, it's available in beta format right now on the iOS and Android stores, but it's also available via a web browser uh, on, I believe, itch.io, if I remember correctly. But uh, you can check that out if you did want something to play over the weekend, but I doubt you'll be pouring dozens and dozens of hours into this one. Just doesn't seem like that kind of game. 
But with that being said, that rounds out today's episode of Caffeinate. Of course, if you are brand new to the show, I do hope you enjoyed today's program. And it is hosted five days a week, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. If you did want to check out the hottest gaming news of the day, but you can always find the VOD, the audio version. And of course, you can find clips on Instagram.com slash Samuel Adams Media. But until next time, you guys have a fantastic rest of the weekend. I will talk to you soon and peace.